My name is Mike Ruppel. I'm back with you week two, and what I want to do is talk about some more baseball tips. Today what I want to discuss is a Jaeger band. Um, I really think that a Jaeger band should be part of any, especially pitching um, player um, equipment. If you're a pitcher and you don't have a Jaeger band in your bag, I would recommend that you go out and get one. Um, J-Band, Jaeger band, it's from Jaeger. He's um, a long toss throwing expert that you can't go anywhere any velocity program, any pitching coach probably know, knows who Jaeger is. Um, he's developed a really good long toss program, and this is a mainstay in, in his long toss program as far as dynamic warm-up. And, and that's where I'm going with the Jaeger band itself, is how to properly do a dynamic warm-up even before you pick up a ball. Um, typically what I've seen in the past, depending on what your level is, um, anywhere from Little League through college, is that pitchers will pull out the Jaeger band They'll attach it to the fence. We're going to actually attach it to the bar here today because we don't have a cyclone fence. We're not on the field. Um, and I want to go through a series of different exercises um, to show players how to get their shoulder, their scapular, their upper extremity moving um, dynamically warm before they start to pick up the ball so that there's less risk for injury. That's the whole importance of this is a good dynamic warm-up. This can also be used as part of the recovery phase after you get done throwing, um, whether it's a flat ground, uh, mock pen, regular bullpen, or after the game. So you can kind of use it in both cases. Um, I like to use the Jaeger bands um, pre-game um, for the dynamic warm-up, and then I usually do something different with um, plow care balls for recovery after the fact. But if you don't have plow care bars, balls, this is um, the perfect way to go. Um, and we'll discuss this as we go through um, as part of your cool down and uh, maybe just a couple other things to just help your arm recover. Um, there are uh, Jaeger bands, uh, very simple, very simply made, a carbinger. It's two um, rubber tubes. Jaeger's put on, obviously his name, but um, two Velcro straps that are attached by loops. Um, they do come in different resistance. Um, there's like a middle school, seventh and eighth grade resistance, and then there's a high school, college resistance. And depending on what your age is, I would say, you know, stay within those resistance. Um, it's not really meant to be an aggressive workout tool. Um, you can do some endurance training with it, but it's just really made um, for a warm up. So you don't want to stretch these across the room because they will break. Um, and you don't want to leave them lay out in the sun because the sun um, and the weather uh, will wear them down. If you start noticing breakdown, um, holes, um, frays, things like that, replace it. Usually you can go on Amazon or you can go to Jaeger directly. They're anywhere from, I've seen them as low as about $28 up to about $40 um, online. I usually go to Amazon. Amazon, you can get them for right around um, $28, $30 bucks and get them on sale, free delivery. So um, again, it's something that should be, it should be a tool that you utilize every time you go to a bullpen, every time before you throw. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna have Joe come in. Um, Joe's gonna be my model today. We're gonna go through a series of exercises I'm just gonna attach this. Again, here we're just gonna put the carbiner through. If you're um, near a fence, you can just hook it right on the fence. You can vary the heights if you need to. Right now, we're gonna keep it about waist height. I would say anywhere from waist height to chest height is probably the standard position it should be in. Um, you can go multi-directional here. Um, you, know, you just have to change your body. I've seen players put this around your, their wrists or I've just seen him grab it. It just depends what your comfort level is, what feels best for you. This is the first time Joe's done this, so I'm not sure what he's more comfortable with. Typically what I do if I'm using this, I just grab him like so, and just use him as a handle. But if you want to, you can you can unstrap him and you can put him on your wrist. Uh, Joe, what, do you, what would you prefer? I can put him on the wrist for okay. demonstration. So, let's just slap one on. If you got big wrists, <laughs> It might be a little bit more challenging, but um, just Velcro. Let's slide you on here. So what I'm going to do is we're going to start off very simple. The number of reps that you do is going to be individual to you. Some people might need 10, 15. Some people might need 30. Um, it just depends. What you're going to do is you're going to put a certain resistance on that you can go through the movement and you feel like your muscles are working and firing, but it's not meant to be an extensive workout. It's just meant to get the blood flowing, activate the muscles. So you have to listen to your body here. It's gonna be a little bit of an experiment. Um, you'll get the hang of it as you go through it. The first one that I always start with is, I'm gonna have you bring your arms down at your side, okay? You can step a little bit closer. I'm gonna have you turn your hands so that your palms are facing back. 
Okay, yep. So, big thing here, and you're gonna hear this over and over again, is posture. You know, where is, what's your head position, what's your shoulder position? You always wanna make sure that the, the player is in a good postural position, that you're not creating um, ba uh, bad habits. Uh, so what I'm gonna ask Joe to do is kinda just retract the shoulders, okay, and kinda set them down and back. All right, so you wanna kinda activate your lower trap, your middle trap, your rhomboids, to get your shoulder in a good position. So ears in line with shoulders, shoulders in line, kind of with the crest of the hip. Your arms can be forward or they can be back here. I'd have Joe probably take a step back just a little bit more. Maybe start with your arms at maybe a 20 or 30 degree angle here. Good posture, set back, chest tall, head in a good position. And what you're gonna do is what I call an oscillating motion. So what he's gonna do with both hands is stay tall and he's just gonna move in a comfortable rhythmical motion, moving back and forth. Maybe go just a little bit faster. Good. So you wanna start activating, you wanna start, start move, some movement. And again, it's, it's going to be an individual feel as to how many you need, okay? I always start low. When he starts to feel maybe the muscles starting to activate through the posterior cuff area, in through the middle, uh, trapezius, lower trapezius, How's it feeling for you, Joe? You feel activating a little bit? You should feel maybe a little bit of warmth, the blood moving. Okay, so again, 10 to 30. If you wanna go time, 20 to 30 seconds, that's fine. Now, the next movement we're gonna do, we're gonna kinda of move up a little bit. So you're gonna to have to take a couple of steps in. What I'm gonna ask you to do is I'm gonna ask you to bring your arms up. Thumbs are gonna be pointing up towards the sky. Okay, again, I want you to set your shoulders in a good position. All right, that looks good. Step back just a little bit, but you can bring your arms forward. When you do this motion, thumb should stay up, hand should stay at shoulder height, okay, both sides. What you wanna do is you wanna pull back just a small motion. Now you may have to adjust this so that when you pull back, you're not pulling so far back behind you that you feel any kind of pinching sensation or stress where you're binding up in here. What you should feel is muscles working down in through here. So I don't, how does that feel for you, Joe, if you just do a couple? So say he goes back and he's like, that, that hurts, that's painful. So step back a little bit more, bring your arms a little bit further forward, come back a little bit more. I like to always keep just a little bit of tension. Now come back, but just stop there, okay? So you don't have to go into full extension. How's that feel, does that feel a little bit better? Yeah. So you can't have any pinching pain or sharp pain coming in through the shoulder, subacromial space, top of the shoulder as they're doing this. Shoulders down and back, chest up. As you move up, it's gonna get more and more difficult. You can feel the stress building on there a little bit more. Okay, so you may have to play with the number. Um, the number's probably gonna drop. Does that feel okay? Yeah. All right, so that's position two. Position three, we're actually gonna step in a little bit more. I'm gonna bring your arms up. Okay, go up a little bit higher. You're gonna turn your thumbs back. And what you want to do is you want to kind of go in the angle of your shoulder blade, okay? So most guys have this wedge shape. You want to kind of come off this angle, come off the angle of the, of the scapula. You want to kind of re just retract, okay? Now when you retract, don't let your shoulders round because you don't want kind of a downward rotation here where you're going to pinch off. It should actually rotate up. Elbows should be straight, okay? Thumbs are up. Again, you don't have to go really far back. You, you can just go about that much motion. Again, rhythmical. Go ahead and just do a few of those. Joe, I know I have your arms up in the air, so they're probably a little fatigued already. That's the third motion. And again, we're gonna, we're gonna start working kind of the scapular stabilizers. We're gonna work kind of the deltoid, all of those kind of muscles. You feel it working. Okay, all right. So that's, that's position three. Uh, fourth position that I like to do is what we call a 90-90 position. So you're going to go 90 at the shoulder, you're going to go 90 at the elbow, okay? This is the starting position, but I'm actually going to drop you down a little bit. So what I want you to do is bring both arms up, okay? So we're going to start 90 at the shoulder, 90 at the elbow. As, as players fatigue, what they're going to do is pull this in, okay? And they're probably going to want to drop way down. I don't want you to do that, okay? So again, you're going to be in this position, 90, 90, set your shoulders, Okay, now what I'm, I ask every player to do is drop down maybe about another 20 degrees so that you're in about a 90-70 position. 
what it does is it takes the stress off up here. You're not going to pinch as much. It just reduces the risk of any kind of inflammation in and around kind of where your rotator cuff comes in and inserts on your shoulder. So what you're going to do here is just go a slow controlled motion, bringing your hands up and down this way. Keep your elbows right about here. Go ahead and rotate. Good. And there shouldn't be any pain. There's no pain, right? Okay. And Joe's got some nice mobility. It's a nice way to assess mobility also. Um, you know, can you rotate? You don't have to rotate as far. Sometimes I've seen people just rotate this far. Again, it's just a warm up. You don't want to be causing fatigue, too much fatigue, and you don't want to be causing any irritation, inflammation uh, through the top of the shoulder. Feels okay. All right, next one we're going to do is we're going to work the biceps. So I, I'm going to have you stand here. Hands are going to be pointing straight up towards the sky. I want the elbows to be away from the body. Players are going to want to suck this down. I'm just going to swing over here. They, they always want to do their bicep curl here because honestly, that's where we usually train. But I want you to be up here. Okay, so arms away. We're going to activate a little bit of the deltoid here. Shoulders down and back. We're going to reinforce good posture. And all I want you to do is just a rhythmical bicep curl going up and down, bringing your palms towards your body. Next one, we're going to just spin you around. So I'm going to spin you around, face you the other way. So, so don't get cross. Yep, just kind of go this way and then turn. There you go. Okay, so what we're going to do here is we're just going to do an overhead tricep extension. So I want you to bring your arms up over the top of your head like so. Good. Again, good posture. Try to set your shoulder blades. Keep your elbows in, okay, if you can. And all you're going to do is you're going to start with your elbows bent. And then all you're going to do is push your hands to the sky, straightening out your elbows, okay? Adjust here if you need to. Again, yep. Try not to let this wing out too much, okay? And just try to go straight up towards the ceiling, activating your triceps. And your pace and your rhythm, it can vary. You know, some guys are a little bit slower, more methodical. Some guys are faster. It's however you want to do it. You'll find the right strategy, you know, so it makes you feel better. You know, I've seen guys do it every way. Now, what I'm going to ask you to do is I'm going to ask you just to come up. I want you just to do a little bit of a, like a chest fly, just to kind of get the chest. Um, you can come out a little bit more and you can actually get a nice stretch too before you, before you pull forward. Again, shoulders down and back. Good. Isolate just a little bit more internal and external rotation so you can actually drop. I'm going to have you drop your non throwing side and assuming your right hand. So we're going to take the non throwing side out. What I'm going to have you do is turn sideways. Let's come up this way a little bit. I'm going to have you come up here, bring this in front. If that's too much tension, step back. Bring this arm here to support it. And all I want you to do is I want you just to set the shoulder blade and you're just going to pull this way. Okay? So we're just gonna work a little bit of internal rotation, lap, pack, subscap, okay? Um, muscles involved in stabilizing the shoulder when you're throwing. Feels okay. Yep. And again, that, that number is up to you, that pace is up to you. Um, slower, faster, all I want you to do is activate the muscles. Okay, turn, go the other way. So here we're gonna come, we're gonna support here, shoulder down and back in a good position. And what you're going to do is you're just going to start here and you're going to pull out that way. So just a little bit of internal, external rotation at the shoulder. Good. The last thing that I usually have players do is spin them around. So I'm going to spin you all the way around here, Joe. And I'm going to get you in what we call, and there's a lot of different nomenclature, there's a lot of different ways that people go into 
the delivery or the motion. Um, I call this stack and trap, but I want you to get into a stack and trap position, which means your, your trail leg is going to be back, your front leg is going to be forward, you're going to get into kind of like a, a little bit of a lunge position, right? What I want you to do is, is I'm actually going to have you start this way, okay? So you're going to kind of bring your hands, you're going to separate your hands, you're going to turn, rotate back into that lunge position, bring your hand to your opposite knee, good, and then just come back, control. Okay, so back foot should rotate, so go ahead as you move forward, this foot should rotate, good, and what I'm looking for here is that their shoulders and their hips stay level to the surface they're standing on, and it just kind of simulates that throwing motion, so go ahead and just do a couple more, and it should be controlled, rotate that foot for me, so that the hips are kind of going, okay, so rotate up on the front of the foot and come back. If it's too much resistance, you're going to see guys get pulled all over the place. It's actually a nice way to assess stability and balance in your player. If they get pulled off balance quite a bit, take some of the tension off. It's probably something you need to work on um, in the weight room or part of your regular stability uh, routine on the field. Okay? How does it feel right now? You can go ahead and take this to this one. So, before you even pick up a ball, that's kind of how you do some dynamic movement, dynamic exercise with a little bit of resistance to get your arm prepared for throwing. We didn't talk about the lower half, the legs. Um, there's a lot of different ways to do that, and maybe that's something we'll discuss in the future. Um, again, you can use the Jaeger band for the dynamic warm-up, or you can use it as part of the recovery phase. Any one of those exercises can, use, can be used in either case. Um, the only tip that I would say is if you use it as part of your recovery, don't stop with just your upper, with your upper body. You should, if you're able to, um, and there's studies on this, do at least 10 wind sprints. They don't have to be max effort wind sprints. They can be 75% of your effort. But if you can get your heart rate up, flush, flush your system, um, and they usually say for every minute of ice, you should do like, you know, one wind sprint. So 10, 15 wind sprints, be done with it. Um, your arm should feel better, it should recover faster um, with the dynamic warm-up and with the recovery phase.